Hey, Team Reynolds, uh, my name is Jeremy Jones. I'll be your wide coach for today, Wednesday, May the 20th. And uh, today I just wanted to share something r real quick with you that's uh, been on my mind and on my heart for the last few weeks, um, something that I've been looking at, reading about, studying, and just kind of seeking some wisdom on, and that is the topic of servant leadership. And uh, some of you watching this today are brand new advisors, and you may be thinking, you know, I don't even have a team yet. Uh, what is, how do I be a servant leader? Uh, and that's great because you're going to get a chance, hopefully, maybe to start your journey um, with the mindset of a servant leader. And many of you on this, uh, watching this video today are incredible leaders on our team who already fully grasp the concept of servant leadership. And it's because of your servant leadership and your example. Um, Sherry and I, I know for us, has been a huge part of our growing process is to watch you guys and learn from you. And so we appreciate you very much. Um, we are all on this advocate journey for a specific purpose, and sometimes that purpose grows and changes, but for all of us, that purpose includes some sort of financial aspect, some sort of financial need, and that's absolutely fine, but one of the things that we have noticed in our journey, and we heard this from the very, very beginning, is that um, our, when we focus on our own needs, our own financial needs, when we focus on our own goals or our own wants, a lot of times we kind of lose sight and lose focus of helping other people. Uh, we've heard time and time again, we need to take our focus off ourselves and just focus on helping other people. Uh, one thing that I remember from the very beginning of our journey was something that Coach C.J. Stockwell said. And he said, don't focus on the pens and the paychecks, but go focus on helping people. And, and I really didn't understand what that meant at the time. I thought that was an incredible saying, so, something so strong that I remembered it all the way to this day. But, but now I'm really starting to see the, uh, the emphasis of that. And, and just through the example that we've heard from so many leaders, um, on how they just sacrificially give of themselves to their team and they pour into their team and they they truly want to reach out and make sure that their team knows that they're there to help them. Um, that person is very successful in this business. That person has a lot of a growth and a lot their team has a lot of growth. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. And that's something that I really want to grasp and understand. So here's some things that I learned as I've been focusing on this the last uh, couple weeks. Um, number one, in Andy Andrews' book, The Traveler's Gift, um, in one of his chapters, he makes the statement that the leader who serves the most grows the fastest. The leader who serves the most grows the fastest. He goes on to say, look, sometimes we're waiting on someone to come and serve us, or sometimes we may be waiting on someone to come by and do something for us. And that's not the point. We need to be out there doing something for other people. And I know for us, the moment we take our focus off ourselves. And we go put our focus on other people and their needs and their goals and what they want in life. All of a sudden, this advocate journey becomes more and more of a joy for us. So number one, the leader that serves the most grows the fastest. Number two thing that I've been kind of looking at over the last few weeks, and this actually happened at leadership school. Uh, my wife, Sherry, had the opportunity to go to leadership school. And, and many of you have heard Stanley Dudrick, of course. We know his story. We know the impact he's had. But one of the things that really resonated to me from hearing uh, so many of you guys, your testimony from leadership school, was as Stanley stood on that stage and he talked about his uh, invention, if you will, his finding of, of intravenous feeding, uh, nutrition through an IV. The moment he discovered that and the moment he put that out there to the world, I, I believe he made the statement that at that point his life was ruined. And what he meant by that is that this, at that point, his life was no longer his, and his life was now a life of service to others and giving to others. Does that mean he has to watch his schedule? Of course he does. He travels all the time, shares a lot, goes and speaks about his uh, his finding and the impact it's made. But when he said, when he discovered that, and guys, when we discovered Advocare, we, we truly grasped the potential of Advocare. Our life, in a way, is now to be given to those that are around us. Our life, our time, our energy, our efforts needs to be given to those that are around us because we have an opportunity to help that person. And so when Stanley made that comment there on stage at leadership school and I was able to hear that, it just really resonated to me um, that I need to be focusing on giving my time, my effort, my energy, my care, my true care, to, to our team members and other people around us. Um, the third thing that really resonates to me is that, and I've heard this on our journey time and time again, is that we, our, our daily task, our daily goal should be adding value to other people's life. Adding value to other people's lives. So whether that's at the grocery store, whether that's picking up the phone and calling a team member, 
uh, product user, whoever that might be, is do something today that will add value to someone else's life. And if we will do that time and time again, we will see fruits from that. We will see people turn and want what we have or even just want to be uh, in relationship with us. Next thing that I want to share with you is, uh, and this again comes from Andy Andrews' book, it just says, you know, when you are the type of people that other people want to be around, when you are a likable person, when you are the kind of person other people want to be around, then you will have influence with people. And I'm thinking, you know what, if I can be the kind of person who serves other people, who genuinely cares for other people's needs, desires, wants, or goals, if I can be the person that they really like, they want to come to me, they want to talk to me about that, um, or they want to answer the phone when I call them to try to help them with that, then I feel like that that would be the greatest opportunity for influence in that person's life. The last thing I want to share um, about this journey, and this actually happened the exact Sunday that many of you were at leadership school, <clears throat> and our pastor shared this story in a sermon that Sunday morning, and it was the story of two brothers, and they were in their hometown, and they were down by the river playing. It's just where a lot of people, a lot of kids go to play and all that. And there were these sand dunes near the river, and as both brothers were racing up and down the sand dunes, they got to the top of one and realized that the foundation of that sand dune was not very solid, <clears throat> and they began to sink. And after hours of not returning home and, and um, not coming back home, everybody, of course, was kind of concerned about where they were. And so as they went to search for them, they knew they were down probably by the river playing. They found the younger brother, and he just they, he was he was sunk in the sand, and um, just from the head up, and he was unconscious. And as they began to dig around and pull him out of that sand, he began to come to. And, of course, the first question they asked him was, where's your older brother? And his response was, I'm standing on his shoulders. And, you know, and I, that's not to be a tearjerker for you today, but what that, what that said to me was, you know, there are people in this world, there are people on our team, there are people in the world of Advocare that really need someone's shoulders to stand on. They need to know what to do and how to do and how to survive, if you will, in this opportunity. Um, and so I just wanted to share all that with you to say, look, this is where Jeremy Jones is looking in the mirror right now. This is what I feel like some of our team members are really searching for. Uh, they are searching for people who care about them, who genuinely care about their purpose and their their future and their family, and they want to go fight for that with them. So uh, I hope this has been of some value to you today. I can't wait to meet all you guys, all you champions at Success School, those that we have not had the chance to meet yet. Looking forward to that. Guys, we are less than 80 days away from Success School. If you don't have your ticket yet, make sure you get there, get it fast, get it quick, do whatever you got to do to get there. Um, can't wait to see you guys there. Hope you have a great day today, and God bless you.